So I'm in front of Warren's house, the third best investment he says he ever made. He paid $31,500 for this house in 1958. It's worth roughly $1.25 million now, which is great, but it's not nearly as expensive or big as you'd expect with, for the one of the richest men in the world, worth more than $120 billion, I think, at last count. It is about 6,500-something square feet, which is about two and a half times larger than the average American house. But again, uh, Warren's net worth is a lot more than two and a half times that of the average American. Uh, to me, if I think of lessons from this, the thing that I'm drawn to is the restraint that Warren shows. He knows when not to move the goalpost. This house is enough for him. A Cadillac is enough for him. And for most people, they get the Cadillac, and then they want the Mercedes. They get the Mercedes, then they want the Ferrari. They get the Ferrari, then they want the private helicopter or the private plane. Uh, they just get, Now, Warren does have a plane, which he calls the, the indefensible. But, but in general, he knows when to say enough's enough. And I think that helps him not just with life, but with investing as well. You combine that with kind of a maniacal focus on on catching what people don't catch. When he was a kid, I and mean, he bought his first stock at age 11, and he used to go around at the horse betting track looking for scraps of paper that drunk people might have just dropped on the ground that might have been winning tickets to earn a little bit of money. That's probably a lot harder these days to make money, but it shows you how passionate Warren is about trying to make money. That's, that's what made him rich. That plus the restraint you see behind me is what made Warren Buffett one of the wealthiest men in the world.